Welcome to the Gridiron. 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 Fantasy. Fantasy. Football. It's the Gridiron. What? 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 Welcome. Welcome to the Gridiron. The Gridiron. Well, we're back after a hiatus. Yep. Where were you? Arizona. All right. Where were you? Here. Here where? Hawaii. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we're back. Okay. Um, lots of stuff has happened over the last two weeks. Um, I don't know if you want to like pull up the scoreboard, perhaps. Sure. But, uh, Let me do that right now while we're talking. Over the last two weeks, a lot of season uh, standings implications have happened. Yeah, well, some people have been officially knocked out of the playoffs. Want to check out the standings here? Yeah, so this is as of last week, and I think as of like the week before, so the week that we missed, um, everyone was still technically alive, perhaps, but as of the results last week, uh, five, six teams were eliminated. Yeah, it says zero here. It said zero in the past, but this time it actually, zero it's, means zero. It's officially zero. And 100 means 100 as well. Correct. So it's really simple. Eight wins gets you in right now, and anything less than seven does not. You can see that everyone but Trav is on one win away from locking themselves into the playoffs. So with two weeks left, the playoff chase is actually relatively simple. Either Trav boots someone out, or, or not, and yeah. he doesn't make it. It's almost a level, it's even more simple than that because Travis has a path to making it, um, and everyone else has like a really easy path to clinch based on how Travis performs. So who does Travis play this week? Joe. Joe. So if Joe beats Travis, game over for Travis, I, Kayla, myself, Tate, and Joe lock in. Yep. That's it. Week 14 means nothing but for seeding. Yep. Uh, if Travis wins, and or myself, Kayla, and Tate win or don't, uh, he's still alive. And then all he has to do is outscore Joe week 14 to then like overtake him. Because points-wise, does Travis have more points than Joe? Travis has more points than Joe and stacked. myself. So he has enough. If he beats Joe, he all he has to do is, let's say he beats Joe by one point. Yeah. Well, in week 14, all he needs to do is outscore Joe by 49. By no, Joe. He just literally needs to outscore Joe and then be in the top seven. Yeah. Um, and Joe not be in the top seven. Yeah. So there's a mix of things, but Travis kind yeah. of holds his own fate in his hands. Same if, if you lose and he wins, if Joe loses and he wins, if Tate loses and he wins, or Kayla loses and he wins. Basically, Travis needs to win out and he needs to outscore a potential loser of this group. Yeah, Kayla, Tate, Joe, or myself need to lose out and Joe needs to win out, or Travis needs to win out for him to have a chance. And it looks like it's a possibility. Sure, so like, I think Travis is realistic, kind of his only way to make the playoffs is he beats Joe. That is the, yeah, he has to do that. If he doesn't beat Joe, then he's out. Yeah. And likely Joe's the person that he'd replace, or you. Yeah. So if you... <sighs> Based on my matchup this week, I think it's more likely that he overtakes Joe rather than me. Yep. Considering I have a relatively easy matchup in Jason this week. Yep. But points-wise, he can easily surpass Joe or myself. Basically, the only person left who remaining who's outside of the playoffs that has a chance is Trav. And he needs to win out... And he needs some luck in terms of points scored. Not in necessarily points scored, but in how they perform week 14 if he does True. win out. He needs to win out, and then Joe would be down there. He would need to not have Joe outscore him by 50 in the final week. And have Joe be in the bottom seven. Yes. So like a little like it's a little bit of a step there, but it's definitely doable. It's doable. And I, I would honestly say the 24, uh, wait, can you scroll up? I think ESPN. Yeah, the 21% chance is kind of probably close to how I would say, like, yeah, 
maybe two and five, three out of four, or a, a one fourth chance about totally one fifth chance. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Well, I mean, Travis is five and seven, so he's lost. The chance he even wins this week, according to these standings, is less than fifty percent. Then he needs to do it again. So two less than fifty percent. So yeah, twenty one percent. And have like the right role the next week. I think the other really interesting matchup this week happens to be at the top of the charts. It's Team Jacob versus Twin Rova. Huge matchup. Uh, this is essentially going to determine the one seed. There's a way in which it doesn't. But it really does determine the one seed. It really does. So here's how it determines the one for Annie. She wins. She's got it. Next Done. week doesn't matter. Done. Best record locked in. Um, so you flip it around. Flip it around. Sam wins. They're currently tied on record, but Sam has a lot more points for. How many more points for? Let's go check that out. I think somewhere in the order of about 100. Yeah. He's about 100 up. That's the wrong one. Yep. Points for. Like, if Sam wins, there's likely... If Sam wins, yep. same record. Yep. So either one of them has gets a win in 14 and the other one has a loss. Unlikely, they've both been in the top half of scoring almost every week. So we're assuming they both win week 14. Well, is Annie going to win by over 100 and X points? Likely not. So basically... Plus more. Sam basically, in my opinion, if Sam wins, he gets the number one seed. It's more than likely he does, but he still has to manage to... A week 14. A top seven score. Yeah. Then the following week, yeah. Well, so does Annie. If he wins, then they both have to manage a top seven score next next week. There is also still, I'll throw it out here, technically a path for me to get the number one seed, which would be a Sam win followed by a me win this week. And then both of them don't score in the top seven next week. It's simple. You have to win out. Yep. Annie loses out. Sam only wins against Annie next week. Yep. And you overtake Annie by the 10 points that you're behind right now. Yep. Possible, but unlikely. So I'm not out of the one seed, but I'm looking in the way Travis is looking in. Unlikely to get the one seed. Yeah. Um, And then from there, like, I, I would have... Kayla's locked in. Kayla's locked in based on points. A hundred point difference is too much to overcome. Everyone else isn't locked in. Like, y'all need to win to lock it in. So I think likely, though, the standings end up basically in this order. I would, Except I think Sam takes the number one seed. I think it's actually going to go a little different. I think Joe's going to fall out, Travis is going to sneak in. I also think, interestingly, if Sam does win this week, it's pretty neck and neck between me and Annie on points. We have a difference of 14 right now. Yes, but you're also two games back. Oh, sure. Yeah. But like if Annie happens to lose out, she probably slides to third. Um, yeah. if, if Sam loses out, his record could end up worse than mine. So there is a little bit of intrigue at the top three. And there's also a means that we're in which any of these people could easily slide into the three spot because I'm only one game up mm -hmm. from the seven seed. So like I could, y'all win out. And I lose out, I could fall all the way down to here. Yeah. Which totally possible. Anyways, quite a bit of interesting intrigue going on. However, I'd like to note that Luke is out. Jason. Jason is out. AJ is out. Gramps right. is out. Aiden is out. And Pops is out. And if you go back to the like even like week three for our power rankings, we've been pretty accurate. Who we've been saying isn't gonna make the playoffs. Um, yeah, we were pretty much right. After the first couple weeks of craziness, I think, like, week three on, yeah, as you said, yeah. it's kind of clear who was good, who was bad, and it's shaked out that way, even after a little bit of, like, random lucky wins, you know. Let's, um, let's go check Also, out. real quick, props to Luke for winning two in a row after losing eight straight. Yeah. Good job, dude. It's also interesting, all their records are the same. They're all four and eight. <laughs> So yeah, only four people in the league are not seven and five or four and eight, which is actually really interesting to me. It would be hard to make the point that one of these teams is that much worse than the other. So there's a lot of parity in the league. Although 
the points for is a huge tops scoring 300 points more than AJ and having the same record. It's because look, he's had about 300 more points against. And you will notice too, even though there's a pretty linear tier of points for like generally the top points for is at the top and generally the bottom is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is a nice curve right here. It's like did a little bit. It's almost down. pretty straight on. Yeah. The points against is the same, but it's more scrunched. So you'll see points against here. It's not necessarily like a linear curve. These guys have low points. AJ has low. This guy has That's medium, weird. high, 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 medium, low, medium, high, medium, medium, medium. It's not as big of a deal how many points are scored against you, much bigger of a deal how many points you're scoring. So the argument like, ugh, <laughs> I had the highest scores against me. Over a season, it matters less, a lot less. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's a good way to look at it. Sure, these people down here have 1377, but that's not that different from 1269 versus 1400 is way different than 1100. So you start to see that as the season goes on, these start to squish together and these start to separate themselves. Um, my point is you can't use points against to determine the likelihood that someone has a better or worse record. Points for is really the predictor. Let's move on. I want to check out since the since the um the trade deadline has come and passed. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at what recent activity looks like post trade deadline. Let's see what people okay. are doing. And the trade deadline was what November twenty second. I don't think so. Uh, I think it was like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, maybe. Well, Thanksgiving was the twenty fourth. I think it was the Tuesday before. I think it was I, the twenty second. I don't know. There's lots of stuff. I mean, there's really, I mean, I've been looking because, you know, I like look to scour off people's drops. Yeah. There's not no big names besides the injuries. Like Kyle Pitts, he's done for the year. He's off a roster. Yeah. Um, I just kind of want to see what people are thinking heading into this like critical playoffs week. What are people doing? You know? Sure. Um, you can see the transactions. Garop got dropped. You dropped McKinnon. Bengals D got dropped. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, any fifty bucks for the Lions D, which I don't even think they have a great matchup this week. Um, personally, I think the Browns have a better matchup, and I sniped them. Yeah, for three bucks. Uh, but props for you know laying down the law on who you wanted. Totally. Um, I guess just like. Michael Gallup for Matt Collins. I think that's a bad move. Um, Jermichael Hasty from Jacksonville. I get it. Etienne's out, but is he? He's pending playing this week. Pending. It's like not <laughs> not locked in. No, and Sam's saying, trying to get that like and same with Zonovan rest. Knight pending. Pending, he's even the player because you know they still have James Robb. So Sam's trying to pend it up here. Sam, the chance that you play Zonovan or Jermichael in a playoff game. Or even moving forward is so low, I think you wasted your fab here. But whatever, what else are you gonna do? It's with his fab? fab to waste. Um You know I, Benjamin's not doing anything. I like your pickup of the Browns. But you can see here there's kind of not that much going on, you know? A couple defenses, a couple a couple like Yeah, I mean with borderline of, These are players that are borderline bench players. With a lot of teams eliminated it's really easy to like let your care for what's going on slip. Yeah. Like we got the toilet bowl to play for, but yep. That's not as much motivation for like, oh yeah, I got the freaking playoffs and I want to win the belt or win the title, you know? Yeah. Normally you see more transaction and there's a lot less, partially because it's the end of the season, but teams are kind of locked in now. So maybe let's go check out the scoreboard for this week. Here 
All right, thank you, Gridiron. I'm Guru Grady. I am back for another week of the injury report. Uh, recapping week 12 injuries. Um, I've also had some feedback this last couple of weeks um, from some of you that um, you're enjoying the injury update. A lot of it you can get on your own. So you want to know more about like, what do I do now that I've suffered these injuries? How do I manage my team going forward? So hopefully I will help tackle some of that um, this week. Let's start with the injuries though. Um, a couple of notable ones, not anything too severe, um, but a lot of small injuries that leave some uh, opportunities this week. Travis Etienne is where we're going to start because he is the biggest name on the board. He got a foot injury. What's interesting about his injury from Sunday is that he was never actually ruled out of the game, um, but did not re-enter the game. The, the coach decided to hold him out. Uh, I saw an interesting write-up from a beat, beat writer uh, from Jacksonville um, saying it's because of his exact running style, the way he plants and cuts and turns. Um that's a higher stress level than other running backs on his foot. And so they just wanted to hold him out to be secure. Uh, he should be back in somewhere between zero. So possibly this weekend or two weeks. Uh, another running back, Michael Carter. He, this one looks a little bit more severe. It looks like to be a low ankle sprain. Uh, probably going to be at least a one game absence, if not a multi-week absence. Uh, Najee Harris uh, was ruled out of the game with an abdomen inj injury after he scored a touchdown. Um, there's currently no update on the severity or if he will miss any time, um, but there is a possibility um, by the time you're listening to this that we have more information on that. Uh, Damian Harris uh, was ruled out of his game with a thigh injury. Um, he is going to miss this week at least. He's listed as week-to-week. Uh, so could be out uh, for a more extended time. Uh, up in San Francisco, Elijah Mitchell. Um, he has a knee injury. He's going to be out for the season. Christian McCaffrey is also dealing with what they call near knee irritation. Um, right now he is questionable working through it. I don't think he'll miss any time this week, but could limit some of his reps um, going forward. <clears throat> a couple of wide receivers we need to mention. Um, there's Darnell Mooney. He uh, is placed on IR. He is going to be, you can assume him out for the rest of the fantasy season. Um, possibility he could re return if uh, the Bears make the playoffs. Um, Allen Robinson also uh, came out before these weeks, this week's games that he is going for season-ending surgery as well. Um couple other injuries that I just want to throw out there. Raheem, Raheem Mostert um, was out this week uh, with a knee injury. Um, he didn't practice all last week, I want to say. Um, and so it could indicate that he could sit a little bit more. Joe Mixon, who was listed out last week as from a concussion, uh, should be clear to be back to work this week. The last injury I'm going to bring up is actually a defensive player because it is a big name and is Aaron Donald. Um, for the Los Angeles Rams. He has an ankle injury, um, which we know the Rams offense has been suffering. But if you take Aaron Donald out of the equation um, on the defensive side, it could mean that offenses going against the Rams should have a new leg up. Um, so running backs and even wide receivers with quarterbacks, more time in the pocket to throw. Um little boost to offensive players against the Rams. A uh, few people got injured and returned back to work. People including Tyree Kill, Jeff Wilson Jr., Josh Jacobs um, all came back in. Uh, what's interesting about the Jeff Wilson one is after his injury and even after they removed the other starters like Tua, um, Jeff Wilson came in for a few snaps even after some of the starters were taken out because of the blowout lead. So that should tell me that Jeff Wilson should be good to go. Okay, that recaps our, our major injuries for Week 12. So you may be asking yourself, all right, I may be out ETN or I may be out 
um, a running back this week, especially because there were a lot of running back injuries. Where do I go? Where do I turn? Well, I'm recording this here Tuesday afternoon in time for waivers. Hopefully you get to hear this in time for waivers tonight. If not, after waivers pass, check out the waiver wire to see if any of these players are av available. Um, I would say look for trades, but trade deadline is coming past. So with the Travis Etienne uh, injury, a couple of running backs that could come into relevancy are Jermichael Hasty. Um, he was the primary backup who came into that game and looked good this Sunday. Um, he, if I'm looking for a spot start this one week, he would be high on my waiver priority. However, don't forget that the Jacksonville Jaguars picked up Daryl Henderson, who was cut by the long, last, uh, the LA Rams. <clears throat> um, so Henderson probably won't be too involved right away, but as the season continues, if ETN is held out longer, we could see Daryl Henderson picking up more of that role and making Jamichael Hasty. Um, back to where he was, which is a pass catch, pa pass catching specialist. Um, over for the Jets with Michael Carter going out. Um, I do expect Michael Carter to be out at least a game here, maybe more. Uh, the person who took over that role in this last game was Zonovan Knight, uh, nicknamed Bam. Awesome name. Um, he saw most of the carries. He had 14 carries for 60 something yards and another three catches for 30 something yards um about 100 scrimmage yards which is awesome what you want to see um there's also ty johnson there who is going to have his work it seems like his role is pretty secure no matter what the running back room looks like the last person who which is interesting is james robinson for the jets um james robinson was a healthy scratch uh, we've seen this a lot from uh, teams in the NFL where they will make somebody a healthy scratch because they don't contribute to special teams. Um, so that could be the case here because um, Zonovan and Ty Johnson help out on special teams. They carry those into this game. But if uh, the primary backup could still be, J be James Robinson if um, going into next week if Michael Carter is out. So it's a little bit of wait and see. Um, I'd put a little bit more emphasis on Knight um, just for the upside chance there, uh, but it's a little bit of wait and see there. Steelers' uh, running back room is also kind of open if Najee Harris ends up missing any time. The primary back is Jalen Warren. However, he's also dealing with a hamstring issue himself. He didn't practice all last week, um, so it, he's probably not trending to be playing this week. Um, he may be rushed back a little bit sooner if Najee is ruled out, um, which leaves Benny Snell Jr., um, the old revival of Benny Snell. Uh, he was thrust into action this Sunday, ended up scoring a touchdown, and looked pretty good this week. Um, so he's another someone you could look to at the waiver wire. Uh, lastly, for the running back rooms, um, because Elijah Mitchell is out and Christian McCaffrey is dealing with a knee injury, there are some new stock going up for valuable handcuffs. That's Davis Price and Jordan Mason, um, the other running backs left in the running back room there in San Francisco. They don't have any standalone value as long as Christian McCaffrey is good to go, but if he is out, getting the number one running back for a 49ers offense is always good to have. Uh, wide receivers. You need to help a wide receiver. A uh, couple places I would look. Uh, these people aren't available on the waiver wire right now, but I just want to mention with the Darnell Mooney injury out for the season, you can expect a, a tick up for Chase Claypool and also I would say primarily Cole Komet um, at tight end. Um, so if you have those players on your roster, um, they may be worth a spot start here down the road. Uh, Rams with Allen Robinson going out. Um, again, tick ups for already rostered people. Um, Tyler Higby and Van Jefferson. Um, I like their stock. You also have Ben Skronik, who is available on the waiver wire if you need a spot start. However, my best uh, favorite pickup for this week is uh, Zay Jones um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's looking like he is becoming a reliable target there uh, for Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> 
excuse me. Uh, I like him because next week he plays Detroit. Uh, so if you need a spot start for wide receiver, um, he's not a bad one to, to pick up and play. The last one I'm going to mention at wide receiver um, is Elijah Moore. Um, not because Elijah Moore is getting a lot of playing time. Actually, he's getting very little playing time. I think he only ran 35% of snaps last week. Um, but because he's got a, a good connection with their new uh, quarterback, Mike White. This is what we saw last year when Elijah Mitchell was super dominant for fantasy football and had a good stretch down the end. He was doing that with Mike White. And Mike White's first game back, we see Elijah Moore put up 13 points on a limited snap count. That is pretty interesting to me. Um, if you need help at quarterback, I'm going to throw three out there for you. Uh, previously mentioned Mike White for the Jets. Um, he came back last week. He actually had the highest passer rating in the NFL of all quarterbacks last week. Higher than Mahomes, higher than Allen. Uh, that is pretty awesome and a big boost for uh, what the Jets needed. Jets have good pass catchers. Um, we'll see if Mike White can keep that trend continuing. Um, Jimmy G is out there. He's going to be a reliable starter. He's not going to bust you any games. He probably won't break the bank on any games. Uh, but if the running back room is hurt, um, they you may see them turn to the throwing game or the short dump-off passes to um, their wide receivers or tight end. Um, so you could see Jimmy G getting a few more points the next couple weeks as they're nursing um, Christian McCaffrey back to health. The last one I'm going to throw out there, uh, which is kind of a deep cut, um, is actually going to be quarterback Kenny Pickett. He played Monday night, and he looked good. Um, we we know that it takes some time for rookie quarterbacks to really get in the groove and get used to the, the game speed of an NFL. It looks like Kenny Pickett is starting to turn that up. We could see a late season stretch from him get pretty good and this is why i like him his schedule at the end of the season here he gets atlanta baltimore carolina then the raiders and finishes with baltimore again you might say oh he has to play baltimore twice against the quarterback baltimore is actually ranked 22nd in the league so they are not a scary matchup at all i think they're ranked 26th against wide receiver so for a passing attack baltimore is great so again Atlanta, Baltimore, Carolina, the Raiders, and Baltimore. Love that stretch for the end of the season for Kenny Pickett. We'll see what he can do. Um, tight end, good luck. Uh, tight end waivers is rough. Um, if you have to pick one up, I'd attach one to a good quarterback, like Mike Kosecki is still out there for Tua. Um, Trevor Lawrence has actually been sneakily good this year. Um, Evan Ingram is still out there. Cameron Brait is back. Hasn't been running a whole lot, but he's attached to Tom Brady. Um, and the one tight end who actually showed out here this week, who kind of out of nowhere, was Jelani Woods um, for the Colts. I probably wouldn't chase the points, but uh, it's up to you. He got a lot of work. It seemed like every play in the second half was going to uh, Mr. Woods there. Uh, that's it. Hopefully those waiver wire... Um, things help you uh let me know looking for good feedback i want this segment to be good for you guys and usable um so you know how to navigate your injuries on your team uh, remember if you have an injury injured player put him in, into your ir slot so you can pick up an extra player for your bench i've seen a lot of people uh not using their ir slots to the fullest this year especially some of our new players so let's coach them up and make sure that they are using every spot um to the fullest um, that's it. Back to you, Gridiron. Or the, the fantasy cast. Let's see, uh, what's going on in terms of matchups. Let's do it. Cool. Um, up first, it's, uh, me versus Tate. Um, first off, Tate, congrats. Huge win last week, setting the new record for points. Yeah. In a game this season. Uh, Josh Jacobs <laughs> crushed our Hawks. God, ridiculous. Yeah, and he's now questionable, which I find funny. He was last That's, week, too. His calf is just old. He was questionable during the game. He was like, oh, is he going to come back in? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, I think this is actually winds up being a really close game. 
again, the Jacobs Adams thing, not always the best. And They've proven that it doesn't matter. Like Tate seven and five, those guys crush all the time. It's no. fine. Tate has big advantages in terms of Josh Allen and probably an advantage in terms of Jacobs to Pierce because Pierce has sucked the past two weeks. Although Browns D is the second worst ground D. So it's not really about the offense. It's more about no. how crushed they get on defense and they're forced to throw. So let's say Tate has advantages at Allen and Jacobs and Adams. Well, I think I have advantages at Cooper, Kelsey, Pacheco. Miles Sanders over White, I think just based on like history like white might score more and i wouldn't be surprised but sanders knows like he's proven it you know he scored fucking he scored 30 <laughs> last week sure almost double white's output so i think a close game i get why tate has the projection boost but i think this is a close game josh jacobs is projected about 24 points this week and it's insane and dak is projected at like 14 really yeah his projection is low Cooper's projected at like 11. So like my guys have low projections. And I as, think as we say, projections don't matter, but I think the chance of 55, 45, when it comes to like what ESPN is predicting, probably close. I would probably give the nod to uh, Tate because sure. he's got the big hitters. And like at this point in the season, your big hitters are the ones that win. You. Absolutely. Like my team usage and yardage wise, everyone did well last week, but I got practically no touchdowns. So I scored a hundred points. Tate got a ton of touchdowns. And some massive booms, highest score of the year. Um, I say really close. Tate has the advantage. I am so excited to watch this game because yeah, I want Travis to lose. I want to lock in my playoff spot. I'm like not. I want Travis to lose because he's been so snotty about his his title last year to me, telling me like <laughs> all this crap. Then it's time for him to eat some snake, you know. <laughs> Joe's snake. Anyway, I'm very biased. I'm rooting for Joe. Um, I don't think he's going to win, though. Uh, I think it comes down to if McCaffrey's healthy, he's got no Elijah Mitchell behind him anymore. He's going to get the load. Oh, did Mitchell get hurt? He's done for the year. Oh. Yeah, same injury that he had <laughs> just in the other knee now. So Classic he's, Mitch. He's yeah. probably done for, like, fantasy purposes, period. Travis's team that he has here is a stronger team almost at every position. So I think Travis wins here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe's got the better receivers. If Chase comes back, that's a huge boost. Um, but we'll see. And, and that's a juicy matchup against Kansas City. Agreed. Edge to Travis, and, but go Joe. Edge to Travis pending. Pending. Injuries and that sort of thing. This one, we do we even need to say it? Yeah, let's talk about it. Jason's team sucks. It does suck, but he's got a bit of room to maneuver here because Drake should be on a bench, not in a starting lineup. Um, Mariota shouldn't be played over the likes of other quarterbacks that are out there. And Taysom Hill, he's more bust than boom at this point. You can probably find more secure points. Yeah. But his players aren't that good. He has no, like, star players. He no. traded away his best player, Diggs, for Pollard. And Olave, who we had earlier in the season and dropped. So, yeah, I think this projection says it all. You're much like more likely to win. The one thing that Jason has going for him that I don't is matchups. Like he's got nice matchups, and I have terrible matchups. So I'm a bit scared for that. Like Kamara against Tampa Bay, that's like the hardest matchup for a running back. Sure, but then he just like all of a sudden Kamara gets eight passes and gets a hundred passing yards at the end of the game. You know, he didn't last week. No, uh, Hopkins, who's been. A revelation since coming off his steroid suspension. On by. On by. My backup, who had a great week with Sam Darnold last week, DJ Moore. On by. You know what's interesting? I would actually play the Pats D over the Browns D. Really would. Buffalo? Yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah. I know you're not going to. Um, so I'm forced into starting Agnew, and Mike Williams might not even play, so I might have to like take another shot on someone. So I don't think it's as set in stone as maybe it looks, maybe the record looks, the projections... Uh, still uh, worried. I do. I think you're going to crush because Jason's team sucks. Here's a toilet bowl bonanza. The first matchup where no one can make the playoffs here. So does it matter? No. And even though it doesn't matter, Luke's going to get crushed. Uh, I don't think so. Dude, he's got Williams and Swift. No, I mean, Smell My Pits just has a solid okay-ish team. And Luke... His just... team name is also old news at this point because Pits can't even be spelled... 
He can't be smelt. He's on the waivers. No, he has been dealt. Um, Smell something else. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Luke has a chance, obviously, because Aiden's team isn't great, but Luke's team is pretty bad. They're both pretty bad. But they are both pretty bad. Anyone obviously. at 4 and 8 right now has a bad team. It's pretty well clear. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. I give the edge to Aiden. Okay. I, I'm going to say Luke wins just for fun. Nice. Um, this is actually a pretty interesting matchup here. Grimms' team has grown in strength over the past few weeks, largely because Fields, Mixon, Gibson, Keenan are all kind of returning to what we thought they would be. We haven't got to talk about it much because we were gone last week, but Grimms' trade for Gibson from me, like he gave up Justin Herbert for Gibson, essentially. Yeah, pretty much straight up. Fields took over that role of quarterback for him perfectly. Yep. Amazing play right there. Yep. And Gibson, he's the RB1 or 2. He puts up like 12 to 16 every week. That and um, Keenan Allen's back. Keenan Allen's his, back. Doing his thing. Christian Watson off the waivers. Great yep. pickup. Hawkinson is a good play every week because he's such a good player. Even though he's not scoring that many points, he's a fine tight end with how bad tight ends are. He's an amazing tight end. Yeah. How bad tight ends and are. And then Kyron kind of has a little bit of upside, but... Really, Kyron is filling in for, like, a Gabe Davis, who I'd play over him, or a Chase Claypool, who I'd play over him, or a Matt Collins, who I'd play over him. So, Gramps has options here at Flex. Gramps' team isn't bad. It used to be bad, and Mixon's doing good, Gibson's doing good, Allen's doing good, Watson's doing good. Trades and waivers yeah. made Gramps' team look a whole lot better, and it's unfortunate that he had such a terrible start to the season, because otherwise I... This yeah. could be a playoff team. Wavered yep. Fields, traded for Gibson, wavered Watson. Three big improvements to his team. He filled the holes. He did well. Yeah. Just goes to show why Gramps is all wise. Just a little too late. Um, Kayla's going to win. Any given week, her team could have the new top score on the season. She has really awesome players. Yeah, she had a really, like, unlucky three loss streak and that's why your record's like down at, down at seven and five better than most people in the league yeah. um i still think still has the almost the third highest points for i think no actually i think she has the second most still no i think so sam and me kayla you sure yeah i disagree okay uh but either way she's up there with the, the big hitters um yeah, her team's rocks, and she's probably going to win. Yep. Agree. Next up is a father and son matchup, the demon versus the hen. Um, AJ's team has been kind of doing well recently, and his pickup of Latavius Murray makes me like his team quite a bit more. Latavius is like a, a solid low-end RB2 now, but I really like that for his team. Um, Tate? Kind of consulted me. I mean, not really. He was going to make this trade anyways, but him and AJ wanted to pull off like a rookie trade. Yep. All super awesome. Props to you guys for getting that done. Tate, I think, gave up a little too little for Murray because he got back Higby and a kicker. And I feel like Murray, as like an RB2, should be way more valuable. Agree. But sometimes you got to take the short end of the stick to make a trade go through, and I get it. I've yeah. done that many times. Yeah. On Pops' end, Dalvin just isn't scoring that many points. I don't know if he's even scored more than 20 all year. Jeff, Jeff Wilson is okay. Not really someone you want to start. With Chase coming back, Higgins, these are both wide receiver twos that could not score much on any given week, although Higgins is good. Higgins has been putting up, but that's been in his stead of number one. Andrews had a couple good games, but he's been nowhere close to Kelsey level. He's the clear number two tight end, but it's like Kelsey way up here, Andrews, then the rest of the... Then Dalton Schultz. Yeah. And he's, like, wavering in between Kelsey and yeah. the number three. Also, shout out to Jason for dropping Dalton Schultz. Too. Love the play of Carter. I think he's high upside flex. Yeah. This is, like, a, a perfect flex play. But pending Mike Williams return? Not really, because he does the returns, and he's a threat to score a long one. Um, Just throwing it out there. And Pops, you can drop Mitchell. He's done for the year. Robinson on IR. He's done for the year, essentially. Yeah, you can drop and pop. Greg Dorch is out. You're never going to play him. Just empty your bench. There's no need for you to have a bench at this point. 
or just take some shots on random guys like Jalen Warren or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think this is a close game, and I can see Trevor Lawrence doing well against the Lions. I can see Henry doing well because they need him to do well because this is an important game for NFL playoffs. Mike Evans is good. I can see Cream Hunt getting a lot of work when Cleveland goes up so much on... Like, I can just see it really playing in AJ's favor this week. So I'm thinking AJ wins. I wouldn't be surprised either way. I might say Pops is going to win this one, though. And now, kind of the best matchup for last, honestly. Juicy, high stakes, and... Yeah, I mean, we might be looking at a potential, like, finals preview right here. Basically, I th- we both think whoever wins this game gets the number one seed. If Annie wins, she does. If Sam wins, he likely does. Likely does. So, so yeah. we're looking at the one seed playoff here, basically. Or the magical way you seed the one seed to Eli <laughs> mishap for both teams. So I'm hoping for like a zero to three score. I'm rooting for Sam to win because i that's my only path to the one seed. Okay, I get it. Um, I'm not because Sam is too big for his britches now with a great fantasy team. Yeah. And also, I think Annie is better at, like, drafting, maybe, because she drafted most of her team, besides the people I traded to her. I don't know. I want Annie to win. That's just how I feel. Totally. I Although, think, who do I think is going to win this matchup, though? I think Sam is going to, because his team is rock solid, star studded, top to bottom. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, except Fryermuth. Fryermuth, Brian Robinson, only two, like, eh. But Jalen Hurts, MVP candidate, Ken Walker, essentially been the RB1 for like the last five weeks, right? Justin Jefferson, best wide receiver in the NFL. Diggs, the number two, you know? Yep. CD Lamb. I have top five. Yeah. Sam's team is really good because of the strength of his receivers. Hawks D, though, they suck. Getting Diggs was a kind of like an unfair boost. It was a really dumb trade by Jason. Um, Because, like, if you have Olave here, his team looks a lot different. With Jefferson, Diggs, and CD as your receivers, it's a really heavy punch. Um, Ken Walker was a great, I think Sam drafted him. He did. Was a great draft pick. Amazing draft pick. Yeah. You bide your time and he. Filled in that role perfectly. That's exactly we what Sam did. We were basically saying Sam's team, the receivers won't be good enough unless his handcuff guys somehow hit and end up being top five running backs. And well, look what happened. They hit. Ken hit. Pollard hit so hard that he got digs out of it. Yeah, they hit. And so it was risky, but Sam risked it and got the biscuit. But we don't like a Sam's attitude about it. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Sam's attitude. He's had success in the league before. Yeah, um, and I'd like to see a newcomer, relative newcomer in Annie in the league to win the first title belt in her fantasy career mm-hmm. and lock up that one seed, which is a better chance to even make the finals because that's one less game. So now, even though I've been telling Annie, don't play Lockett and DK, don't play Amir Abdullah over Tyler Lockett, Annie. Who the heck is... Oh, the Raiders backup? No. No, 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 no. Even if Jacobs is out, then you, you don't do that. You, no, 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 no. Because they have, like three backups you don't know who's gonna do what yeah and i would meant trade tyler lockett to someone so you can have more now that you have both just play both they're lockett is what wide receiver 18 dk's wide receiver 22 they're both starting receivers you play them and you hope that the hawks have a big passing day um and juan has been freaking awesome he bageled last week i think um and he has had juan and uh hurst hurst and has, she's misplayed them each time the last two weeks but yeah that's just tight ends you know what are you gonna do yeah in terms of who i think is gonna win i think sam is gonna win same um and i for my selfish reasons it helps it behooves me if sam wins it gives me a chance for the number one seed although as someone who wants sam to lose in the fantasy playoffs it also behooves me if he has to play an extra playoff game. He doesn't get the bye. So, kind of happy either way. There is there is means to happiness in all of these outcomes. Yes. Um, Dave, I got to bounce. So this is about it for the gridiron here. Anything else? Um, no. No. I don't think so. Cool. Well, uh, with playoffs on the line, make sure to set your lineups. We had a mishap last year where Caleb... 
games next week or some at a certain point games will start to be on saturdays <coughs> going into the holidays yeah like yeah. around christmas time just be careful with your lineups make sure they're set um let's see we will likely likely know this week very much we'll know if travis is making it no if he loses there's a chance that the playoffs are locked there's up. a chance the playoffs get locked and there's a chance the one seed gets locked mm-hmm. so all eyes are on kind of on like sam eddie and travis joe this week in my opinion yeah and everyone else score some points just in case for seating purposes yeah all right well this has been the gridiron yeah thanks everyone thanks for stopping by this has been the gridiron. The gridiron. AJ. Subscribe. Bye. Bye. The Green Eye.